So welcome back to Third Rate Content. Yeah, today we're once again in South Shropshire. And we're about a mile south of Craven Arms and we're in the small hamlet of Stokesy, which is the home of Stokesy Castle. Must stop playing with my hair. But um, we're gonna have a full investigation today of this uh, fortified, beautiful fortified manor house and learn some of its history. So buckle up and I'll see you out here. Yeah, but just before we go in, I think we'll, we'll, document, we'll have a look at this really old uh, medieval, I would say Norman looking, square towered church. Yeah, ancient memorial. What's the churchyard here? Resplendent with yew trees and other trees and foliage. Yeah, let's go into the yew tree grove. Yeah. Oof. Memorials under the yew trees. And that's a massive one. Yeah, a real piece of history. Amongst all this history, yeah, that tomb, that memorial does look kind of atmospheric. Thomas Ramill, aged, what does that mean? Aged L years, RIP. Sixteen sixty five. A little door, <laughs> very um, evocative. You see a little man, little dwarf or something coming out of that with a beard. I'm thinking of like fantasy dwarf, not real life, politically incorrect term used by third rate content because I wasn't even using it. Let's go and have a look in the church. Yeah, there's a funeral on in the church, so we'll just make our way into Stokesy Castle now. Stokesy Castle is run by English Heritage. Uh, the cost for admission for an adult is £9.50 and £8.50 for children. Best to book in advance online because you save 10% if you're not actually a member of English Heritage. I didn't actually show the gift shop, um, it was nothing special. There was no specifically branded Stokesy Castle merchandise because I was in the market for, for a pen, but I just bought an English Heritage one. Yeah, so what we're looking at here is the gatehouse into Stokesy Castle. This wasn't the original gatehouse, the, the original was stone and almost made the, the manor house look fortified. Um, this particular gatehouse was replaced in the uh, 1600s, so it'd sort of be late Elizabethan, sort of early Jacobean. And it's very similar to the timber framed houses you might find in Ludlow. We haven't actually visited Ludlow yet on third rate content. Hopefully we'll get round to it this summer. So Stokesy Castle is on rising ground uh, in the valley of the River Onny here in South Shropshire. It does have a very martial appearance when you sort of pass it on, on the road, but it was never meant to be a serious fortification. Um, the, the guy, the, the landowner who had it, he recently made his way into the landowning classes um, and didn't want to seem like he was a threat to the Welsh marcher lords of the 1200s, 13th century, which, which um, kind of bossed this area of England. Yeah, Lawrence of Ludlow became one of the wealthiest men 
in England at, the, at that time in the 1200s due to being a wool merchant. These guys were the players of their era. We're just going to be going through the gatehouse. I'm going to have a look at some of the detail on it, but I'll just bring our attention to the moat. It's actually not 100% known if it was filled with water. There is um, a picture, an engraving of Stokesy Castle in the 1700s, which has got water in it, but the, there is no proof because there's, there was no clay found to line the moat. But of course, it was really robbers and um, such like who were out to get some of the wealth of, of Lawrence of Ludlow. That This castle, um, fortified manor house, was to deter. It wasn't ever fortified, it wasn't ever besieged or actually took part in a military action. It was really for show. Yeah, I think the detail on the gatehouse has got a sort of biblical theme. And I believe on the lintel going in, these are Adam and Eve, and this is the story, the Christian story of creation. Some fine craftsmanship on display here. Wow. Medieval domestic domesticity. Easy for me to say. Get a full three sixty. She smells old and more. Look at the leaded windows. This is the exact view someone in the 1600s would have imbibed. Yeah, that is an old door. I wonder if it's original to the 1600s, 17th century, of course. <laughs> So you've chosen not to go with the audio guide today? Yeah. Uh, so let me know. Wild man and a woman, according to the guide. The South Tower, um, which we're about to visit, was this, was built after the solar block um, by Lawrence. And it is thought that he lived, him and Lady Lawrence lived in the South Tower and his children lived in the solar block. Yeah, and the windows would have been shuttered with these, uh, with the wood over it here at the sort of main hall there wouldn't have been glass in the lower floors the castle well it's not the biggest well i've seen but it certainly does the job it really is beautiful here though yeah there does seem to be a peculiar light um, cast on both the timber and the stone here So Stokesy Castle did have a curtain wall that surrounded it, but this was removed during the English Civil War because, you know, uh, any place that had a chance of fortification was what they called slighted. And although Stokesy Castle was never actually a serious um, castle, it was thought wise to remove its meagre fortifications. Yeah, the, the rustic has failed on this barn. It's completely collapsed. So we're gonna go into the South Tower. Let's go, it's very dark in here. Imagine it's very much in keeping with how it was in its heyday. Fireplace. Um, Smithies iron for making the horseshoes on and other iron implements. You can tell I'm not a blacksmith. Yeah, so I imagine this area would have been storage. Um, obviously, there was a fireplace, 
So maybe servants' quarters or that type of thing. Of course, this arrow slot, no arrows were fired in anger from here. Yeah, and I think we're just gonna go up to the first floor of the safe tower. These are well-used stone steps over the little wooden bridge, drawbridge, and into the safe tower, first floor. No, yeah, a lot, lot more grand in here, high ceilings. And I think this was in use by the owners. And you've got some absolutely, once again, fantastic views. So these windows, I can imagine the lady of the manor. Lady Lawrence sitting here, perhaps doing some tapestry. Do some tapestry. Looking out the window at the beautiful views of what, what that family owned. All of it. Wooden floors in here. But unfortunately, all the timbers in the South Tower were destroyed in a fire in 1830. So obviously they're all replacements now. These recesses are thought to have contained lamps in uh, the South Tower's heyday. Very medieval. Big fireplace here. I'm sure you would have needed it in winter. Still pretty cold today at the end of March. Yeah, the render. Imagine this is original, still on the still on the walls. Whitewash. Yeah, a lot of the views seen south from the south facing windows in the tower were of water courses and fish ponds and it gave the castle a grander look on the south approach from Ludlow. You can sort of see the, the river here and of course there is a fish pond here and there might have been more in the 1200s. Now we're going to go up again. This is the, uh, is it the second or third floor. Well, it could be the parapet on the top. Exciting. Yeah, so we can get a view all the way to Ludlow from up here. Wow. Wow, this is great. Crow, growing sun and rest in rain. I've never heard that one before. Uh, I'm still thinking about it. And that is the Ludlow, well, the A49. That's how I got here about 20 miles south of Shrews Shrewsbury and Ludlow. It's about another 10 miles just up there. And that's where the Lawrences of Ludlow would have hailed from. And there's some serious chimneys, but then they had some serious fireplaces. Yeah, there was a, there's been a property or buildings on this site well before Stokesy Castle. When Lawrence of Ludlow made his fortune and became a very influential man, he was given the right to crenulate. Very much like at Acton Bur Burnell Castle, which we covered some time ago. And we're at the highest point of Stokesy Castle here. That's about the highest view we're gonna get. Actually a funeral, funeral on today, but we couldn't go in the church. So if it's finished, 
when we've uh, done visiting Stokesy Castle, we may well go and give it a visit. It's like a massive medieval barn, but it's actually part of the manor house. Wow, so old. To use a well used third rate content catchphrase or cliche, even. No, we're always talking about old doors. Yes, that looks a mighty old door, but it's also a mighty big door. Biggest and the oldest. Apple lattice, or is that just me? Yeah, this, uh, this artist's rendition of what it might have been like to, in the dining hall here at Stokesy, from this exact angle. Um, yeah, and you've got the great and the good dining here over the time. Over time, we have evidence of a visit to Stokesy by an important local lord, the Bishop of Hereford, Richard Swinefeld. His first name was His Jerry. His records for Thursday, 27th of April, 12, 1290, show an in itemised receipt for food and drink consumed at Stokesy. It was customary for large feasts. The Bishop contributed towards the costs incurred by himself, his advisers and servants. On the menu, during the 10 day stay were two sexatories of wine, the equivalent of 48 bottles or 36 liters, two whole pigs, two calves, three goats, 10 capons, which are male chickens and five other fowl with substantial quantities of bread and ale. The Abbot of Hormond, we featured Hormond Abbey on third rate content, was probably also entertained at Stokesy during the Bishop's day as the abbot is recorded supplying oats for 35 of the bishop's horses. So everybody was chipping in for a real good stay at Stokesy. Yeah, so it's not far from the anniversary of the Bishop of Hereford's stay here, another week or two. Um, but yeah, it's great to think of all the merry times had in this hall over the years. And we're having a great time now too. Yeah, the roof timbers that you can see above me and the open half, which I can't actually see, they were features that were incorporated to make this hall look older than it was because, of course, the Lawrences of Ludlow, uh, Lawrence of Ludlow, he, had, he was an advisor to the king as well as a wealthy, wealthy wool merchant, and he wanted to make... He'd be, recently been brought up he wasn't ability, but he'd been brought up to the upper classes, the elites of the day, and he wanted to make it look like he'd been one of them for generations, but he hadn't. Is this the open hearth? I'm not sure. I think what you call it, call it, Lawrence of Ludlow was aspirational and a social climber. You know, who can blame him? Yeah, an artist's rendition of feasting in the 1200s or 13th century, however you want to say it. Yeah, the staircase and the beams here at Stokesy have been dendro chrono chronologically dated and they are from the 1200s. And it's quite a rarity that you will find this kind of timber and woodwork still standing in a medieval castle or hall. So it really is something to be savoured. turning the barrel is it not mine
Yeah, it's unknown exactly how much Lawrence of Ludlow paid for Stokesy Castle. Would have been, they've worked it out that Lawrence would have paid something like 200, 200 pounds in those days money for this place. That's probably before the works started. So anyway, it was a huge sum. But remember, he was one of the richest men in England. He could afford it. So it's thought these tiles do date from the original um, building of Stokesy Castle in the 13, in the 1200s, but they're thought to have been moved from this room at some point. And a small fireplace, well, they're not so small fireplace. This was added in the 7, 1600s when the gatehouse was commissioned to be built by William the First Earl of Craven. Again, it's thought this area was um, where the steward of the castle would have had his room. The steward was the most important man. Well, he ran the castle basically for the Earl or whoever was in charge. So he was a very important man within the castle. Oh, they're not very high rises on these steps. Of course, people were shorter in the 1200s. Exactly, it's sort of, um, because it was done with a purpose. Well, here, yeah, marked up so that people could then um, it's not, it's not very Georgian, assemble it again like a kit. Oh, right, So yeah. we've got oh, double yeah. circles, double circles, and all over, you can't see them because it's the light nice. isn't so good and they're so high up, but all over where you've got beams joining, yeah. you've got a, a series, and sometimes it's a circle, a single circle or a double circle or a circle within a circle or a circle with an arch through it, yeah. so that they, because they were, weren't particularly literate, so they would need something here you can see there. We're going into what is the kind of crane jewels of Stokesy Castle, the crane jewel, the solarium. This is where the lady and lord of the manor would spend most of their time. It's absolutely beautiful, tranquil room. This pedigree of Ludlow. Starts with Lawrence of Ludlow and then works its way down all the way well the Ludlow family possessed Stokesy Castle for 217 years from 1281 to 1498 so they had a good run yeah, and these fine windows they have been looked out of for quite a few hundred years that is the grandest fireplace in Stokesy Castle. It goes all the way up still. Yes, lady. Portrait of Francis Stackhouse Acton, 1820. And these are her actual fine white gloves. Yeah, what the lady was talking about is like the carpenter's marks we've seen on a number of properties in Shrewsbury. Um, but because people were quite illiterate back then, the marks helped them to reassemble the timber because timber was used and reused in, in different applications. You do find this in old houses right up to uh, the Victorian days is these wood lats were used instead of plasterboard so they'd, they'd all be nailed on by hand 
um, usually apprentice would do it and then they'd be plastered over whereas today we just put a plasterboard in there's been some uh, modifications here yeah these walls just lots of little stones little pieces of stone and then they would have been whitewashed after Pretty nice um, ceramics there. Very nice. Yeah, in this room, got the wood panel in. And I should assume they were cupboards as well. That's yeah, so a functionality and good looks. You can see the plaster still on here. So this gives you an indication of what it would look like in its heyday. It just keeps going on this place. I mean, that room looks archetypically medieval to me, even though you know, I'm not from the medieval times. It's got that atmosphere. going to shape bar at them ones not from the museum today i'd like to though bah no they can't hear me don't want to talk anyway we've seen a lot of windows and views today but, you know i'm just trying to get the the feeling of what it would have been like in stokesy castle's heyday This a dungeon? Did Stokesy Castle even have a dungeon? I probably didn't, it was a storage, as you can see. Barrels, just to give you the idea. Uh, probably a wine cellar. It would have been more the Marcher Lords who had a dungeon with people in it. Not the wealthy wool merchant. Yeah, and I keep saying, I am not taking my turn in the barrel. No way. <laughs> I only just learnt what it meant recently. You know, I just thought, pirate in a barrel, sailor in a barrel, pop up pirate. <laughs> but the actual term's far more shocking. Yeah, and this herb garden. This is a Edwardian guile style. This garden is actually planted, not in a medieval style, an Edwardian style. Typical of about 1908, when the, gar when, the, when the garden was first opened to the public. We can't be sure about the use of this space when the castle was built in the late 13th century, as no traces or records su survive. Some castle gardens during that period were functional for growing herbs and vegetables. Others were more decorative. Usually they filled both roles with an em emphasis on produce. So this garden was, was uh, implemented when the castle was restored in the 19th century. I tell you what, it's a very fragrant garden. It's all kinds of herbs and um, sweet smelling things in it. Yeah, and if anyone remembers our trip to Whittington Castle two years ago, um, there was another medieval planted, a uh, medieval uh, sort of pleasure garden there so so obviously gardens were big in the medieval days and also medical treatments were grown um on gardens you know herbal remedies and, and such like which most pills today are based on synthesized versions of these so there you go big farmer is that the green man the green man of clum let's go to clum soon
but the church did have a hard time during the English Civil War, like so many places. The parliamentarians apparently roughed it up a bit and, and the roof had to be replaced. As you can see, it's a, a new, new tile in on there now. And uh, there was other issues after the Civil War, just like Soaksy Castle had its curtain wall removed. Yeah, we just come out of the gate house now. We're gonna go have a little walk down the moat walk, I think. I saw some people doing it when I was up on the tower. And you know, gives you a whole different aspect to the castle being down here. But it's like I said, I don't think, like many castle moats, Stokesy ever had water in its moat. But it's kind of a something you just tend to assume that a moat that always has water in it. When it definitely doesn't always, it's an obstacle really to attacking the castle. But of course, Stokesy Castle was never attacked. Yeah, and you get that really down low view. Of course, the solarium there, we were just up there. And then the lower floors of the of tower. Oh, yeah, you get to see them, the lovely timber work. You can see it juts out like so many timber frame buildings, juts out from its plot size. Oh, Mega's plot sizes weren't really an issue here at Stokesy, like they would have been in the center of Shrewsbury in the in those days. Would deliveries have been received here, do you think? No, there's no hoist above it. Yeah, buds are well on on the way on this tree. So spring is is really coming. Look at the mistletoe up there. It is worth quite a bit mistletoe though at that time of year. Avenue of daffodils. Yeah, I don't think the uh, stairway's safe, hence why it's been fenced off with this temporary fencing. Have to go back the way we came. Real good looking barn there, right next to what was a barn and is no longer, it's just components. Yeah, and the church alongside Stokesy Castle is actually called John the Baptist and it dated, it's John the Baptist Church and it dated from a bit before Stokesy Castle. You know, remember there was uh, things on the site of Stokesy Castle preceding it. Okay, we're just gonna have a little look in the Church of John the Baptist, because there was a funeral going on here when we came this morning. Like I said, this church predates Stokesy Castle. Yeah, beautiful stained glass. And old. Saint Gabriel, so strong, Saint, Saint Michael. Mm, you can smell the candles burning. It's very old things here.
be interesting if the organ looks like it's on the first floor. You don't see that very often. Uh, I don't really practice religion myself, mainstream religion. I wouldn't say I'm not spiritual, though, because I'm not an atheist. I'm not an anything theist. Uh, I just go with the flow and the information I've got in front of me. But that doesn't mean I don't respect anybody's faith. Whenever I've travelled around Europe and the world, I always used to light a candle for my Catholic grandmother in respect. She's passed away now, sadly. Yeah, didn't light the candles in the airport or, like, in a bar. It was in historic cathedrals that I visited. Very faint, but you can see his face and beard. It's something you don't see every day in a church. The bell ropes just hanging down here. Well, they're tied up temporarily, but, yeah, this is where the bell ringing happens. Wow, they just close that curtain for a bit of privacy. You just got to remember, we are in the Diocese of Hereford here, not Shrewsbury. We're a long way from Shrewsbury. And I've got every intention to visit Hereford, hopefully in 2023 because um, I've never ever visited it and it's going to be a beautiful city so it's fairly close to the third rate list but there's a lot of things though close to the top of the third rate list they all get covered eventually though of course this is the war memorial for Stokesy um, World War One and World War Two. so you had quite a lot of people sacrifice give the ultimate sacrifice from Stokesy, more than I would have thought. I didn't realise quite how big Stokesy was. Many names. So it's bye bye Stokesy Castle, though we can always visit again anytime we want to watch the video here on third rate content. We're just looking down. The valley, the River Oni Valley, is the river on the way to Ludlow. So thank you for watching to the end of today's third rate content. Um, if you've got this far, there's a good chance you did enjoy it somewhat. But like I said, um, thanks for watching to the end. If you did enjoy today's um, video, please think about leaving a like, possibly subscribing if you haven't already, or do leave a comment because I do love a good comment and I reply where applicable. But anyway, thank you. And if I don't see you soon, I'll see you three times as soon. Third rate content, signing out. Bye-bye.